basic idea is to put some wood or some other kind of biofuel into your feed tube here and then ignite it where your initial fire occurs you want to insulate you want to keep the heat in so as to maintain a high temperature this is what mr evans calls the j tube the reason that there's a sharp corner here is so that the exhaust gases which will be streaming off the logs that you've stuck into the feed tube will suddenly be tumbled together then this insulated heat riser and that's what we use the vermiculite for and that's why we use triple wall pipe is we want to keep that turbulence and that temperature at a high level. You have a, a fire here, but in fact the gases continue burning throughout the system until you hit the underside of the barrel, which caps the rocket stove. And at this point, you've got a, a pretty major heat release. This is sort of like a blowtorch on the inside of the barrel when this is operating. And so then you get rapid cooling of the gases. And they spill over like a waterfall and so you get a lot of radiation out of the sides of the barrel. To fully use your your fuel to get the most heat and the most utility out of the fuel that you put into your rocket stove, link the combustion unit with a mass which will then absorb that high temperature heat and release it over a longer period of time after the fire has gone out, lower temperatures but still pleasant temperatures for uh, indoor space heating or indoor contact heating. You have to use fire bricks because of the high internal temperatures that will be generated in this device. We also have some regular bricks. They're just used for sort of the structure of the device. Vermiculite, this is an item that you can get at building supply stores. You can expose vermiculite to terrific temperature. The drier your fuel, the better. We're using wood today, but you can use pretty much anything that'll burn. 55 gallon drum that has the paint burnt off it already. Burning paint is not something you want in your living environment. A sheet metal form that will help to contain the high temperature. Some triple wall pipe. That's just sand dug out of the ground here in Michigan. And some clay and some sticks. And then we've got a mixing pan. Building a rocket stove can be done by you and your friends in just a few hours or by one person over a weekend. Place the fire bricks forming the base of the stove onto a heat resistant surface since temperatures will rise in excess of 1500 degrees. There are two openings in the base. One is to feed fuel into, the other leads to the insulated combustion chamber where superheated gases ignite within the stovepipe. Be sure to get quality triple wall stovepipe as its role in the rocket stove is critical. It can heat up to 2000 degrees. Making the sheet metal form from some old stock with shears and rivets might take a while, so be patient and cut carefully with space left for vermiculite infill. Lowering the form in place may be easier for two people, but partially building it in place may be easier for one. Be sure that the form is secured to itself so it won't flop open later. Place a form around the smaller opening to keep the insulation tidy. Before adding the vermiculite, which is made from volcanic rock, you'll want to dampen it to keep the dust down. It's heat resistant, lightweight, and can be purchased at a building supply store. Regular bricks can be used for the part of the base where the exterior barrel goes. Fire bricks here would be excellent as well. Now it's time to lower the exterior drum into place. This contains the heat and the top of the drum will get very, very hot. Mix sand, clay, water, and straw to connect the various parts of the stove. This contains and traps the heat and helps hold everything together. It's lots of fun to get your hands and feet muddy. Once everything's in place, light the fire and get ready to chase up the chill. When the stove reaches operating temperatures, all the smoking exhaust completely disappears and only heat waves will be seen exiting the device. A thermal mass can be shaped into a wall or bench for maximum indoor comfort.